Right, hello everybody. Um, I'm going to try out, I was cleaning out my um, workroom the other day and I found this which I used a while back. Bondit dust proofer and hardener. So this says it dust proofs and seals concrete. Surface hardener for concrete floors. Chloride free premium quality. So here we are, dust proofer and hardener. Description, low viscosity liquid which penetrates and chemically seals concrete produces a hard wearing non dusty surface. Application for use on garage, warehouse, factory and workshop floors. So I suppose we're gonna have to pretend that our statue is a workshop floor, but it's concrete, isn't it? Shelf life used within 24 months. Now I can't remember if this is 24 months, I got this two years ago, or longer. Anyway, I'm gonna see what happens anyway. So here goes. So this stuff is supposed to harden the surface and give it some protection also. We'll give it a go. Um, I'll give it two coats. I'll give it, I'll give all the concrete ornaments I got here one coat today, wait 24 hours and then put another coat on and then we'll have a look at the final result. I mean at the very least it might kind of improve the surface to paint on if we put any paint jobs on these ornaments and a little bit of added protection as well for when people put them outside or if people put them outside. Um, what I should probably do is put a sealer on top anyway for any items that do go outside. Any items that stay inside I tend not to seal on the top because I think the paint finishes look better with the natural paint unless you might want to kind of sort of equalize the paint finish over the entire ornament if that makes any sense so you get like a balanced sheen or whatever um, consistency or look you want your final piece to look like on whether that's gloss sheen matte satin or whatever so anyway let's get on with it and we'll put the coats on and we'll go from there so just shaking it up I've got a container here, or an old jam jar that we can use. So that's the consistency, as you can see, kind of like a watery consistency, or a consistency like water. Trusty paintbrush, and away we go. I think I'll do the base first. So I've got a few of these to get through, so I'll show you what they're, when they're all done. When I've uh, put all this stuff, when I put this stuff on all of them. All right, so there we are, that's the first two done. And as you can see, we've got a few more to do there. And a few more to do here. So there we are, all done. Although I'm not sure if you can actually see that I've done it because it dries out quite quick. One more coat and we'll do that tomorrow and uh, then job done and then we'll see what the results are like. Right here we are the next day and we're going to put the second and final coat on for this uh, batch of concrete ornaments. So here goes. So there we are, second coat applied. And we'll come back tomorrow and uh, check upon all the ornaments and see what's happened and maybe test a bit of paint on 
the uh, concrete items as well. So we'll see you then. Okay, so we've let the dustproofer hardener stuff cure. So this is actually a couple of days later. So it's had plenty of time to cure and uh, dry. And there's part of the other batch. And what we'll do in a moment is test some paint on the surface and have a look at how the concrete dustproofer hardener has affected our concrete ornaments. Right, so here we are. Um, this is obviously the uh, fossil cast. And uh, it, obviously the, um, the ornament doesn't feel much different. So according to the container, um, it says that uh, the concrete dust proofer at, and hardener actually does harden the surface. And what I did notice is that it dries out in a kind of PVA glue consistency. So it's watered down, but obviously it's not the same um, material as far as I'm aware. So, um, yeah, so on the top layer, it's just a, the concrete's absorbing the dustproofer stroke hardener into the surface and kind of acting as a kind of bonder type of thing. So yeah, but anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some paint on these items here and see if it helps with paint coverage. So we've got trusty paint brushes. We've got some paint here. And I think, we're, so we've got the fairy door, concrete fairy door, which isn't actually a perfect cast. There's a couple of the mushrooms were damaged, but we'll use this as a test piece anyway. So this has got the dust proof or hardener on it as does this skull plaque so also this is another one with a few air bubbles but we'll do a we'll do a paint job with a few effects on this we might not finish this in this video that could maybe go on to another video so first up i'm going to paint just paint the door the actual door on the cast the wooden part or the represented wooden part with red paint so using acrylic here as always, or usually, water. Just make it a little, make the paint a little bit fluid so it can move and cover the area easier. What we will do is, I will finish these off in another video because you want to wait a night for this paint to dry and cure also to uh, add either another coat or effects like washes and dry brushing. The dustproof hardener has actually helped with painting the item so it might be handy to use if you've got some more intricate paint jobs in mind for your concrete pieces because usually without it without this um, that's proof for a hardener. The paint gets sucked into the concrete. So obviously we've got the, the hardener in between the paint and the concrete. So it actually helps with painting the item, which is good. Because actually, if you put an undercoat on, you have to wait 24 hours or well, it's ideal to wait 24 hours for your undercoat to dry anyway. So using the uh, dustproof hardener might be a good idea in those cases or similar. So anyway, if anybody else has used the dustproof hardener, let us know in the comments below. And also of any alternatives before, you know, like protecting your concrete and to make painting your concrete easier. What I usually do is just put a put a wash of acrylic down as my base coat and then build upon that with uh, further layers of acrylic paint. I'm going to paint the uh, mushrooms red as well. We can put some white dots on there also. 
for that fly agaric look. Doesn't matter if you get paint all over here because we're going to paint the uh, rest of the fairy door with um, different colours anyway. Right, so let that dry. And what I'm going to do with this skull is I'm going to put a background of um, kind of a dark brown colour. And we'll turn this, we'll do, some, we'll do some dry brushing as well in another video to create some rust effects with these bug holes here so they can we'll, we'll turn it into something metallic and use these as as rust holes oxidization to give a oxidized metallic skull look so let's mix up our brown paint I haven't got any brown left so I'm going to have to mix mix them up so you got a combination of orange and green here and I'm not going to mix it in thoroughly so we get different shades over the skull right so I let that dry so there we are that's where we are with a relatively uh, fluid acrylic paint for a base coat there and like I say we'll put some dry brush dry brushing effects and some washes over these once they have um, dried and cured the paint uh, and that'll be for another video so here's some of the other objects of course um, and actually the hardener dust proofer stuff will come in handy for just doing that um, dark wash to bring out the detail on these concrete items and so most of these will just have a dark wash and we'll do that in another video coming soon so like with the dark wash like if I hadn't put the uh, dust proof or hardener on what I've noticed in the past that if you do put a wash on to uh, bring out the detail you end up putting a couple of washes or even a few washes on because the concrete absorbs the paint into the concrete of course so the so um so what I mean to say is uh, you might get a cleaner wash bringing out those details if you put some kind of transparent coat underneath and of course in this case being the dust proof or hardener so like I say, if you've got any other ideas or you use anything else or you use this product on concrete ornaments, let us know in the comments below and that'll be great. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was a bit of a sort of suck it and see video really. And we'll see you soon. Over and out for now.